Hello, I'm Gardy. Uh, my full name is Lutgardo Luz Labad. I'm from Bohol. I'm the theater director and founder of a newly established drama group called Dulaang Kasing Sining, which means drama group that does art with the heart. Teatro Porvenir is the name of our first play as Dulaang Kasing Sining. It's Spanish, Teatro Porvenir. It means theater to come, theater of the future. Teatro Porvenir One, which is Act One, portrays the life of our national hero, Andres Bonifacio, as an emerging poet and a theater director. He developed Teatro Porvenir as his response to the theater of the time. It is also the title of the place that we are producing. It's a dramatic biography of his times and his life as a theater artist. But on a bigger level, it's, it represents our aspirations. No? This, this is what we want our theater to be here in Bohol. A theater that will speak the language, that will use our heritage. From the very time I was here in Bohol, I was always enamored with the idea of making theater in the cockpit. I always saw it as, uh, wow, it looks like the arena theater of Shakespeare, the Globe, and all of those Elizabethan kind of a theater. If you're in this theater, the audience is surrounding you, almost three-fourths. You're in very close contact with the audience, in very close communication. You could hear their voices, their reactions, a breath away. Huh? And you don't need all of the so many lighting equipment, which many auditoriums require. It is just a basic sound and lighting facility. So I've chosen the cockpit because of that. Cockfighting is very popular in the Philippines. Almost every town, every province, they have all their, their own cockpits because cockfighting is still being practiced. And there is now a national law saying that there will be no more cockfights in the provinces, in the towns during the weekdays. So suddenly there was no business here in this cockpit. And I found that as an opportunity. I talked to the owners, told them, this is a beautiful place for drama, for culture. Could you ask, could you let us use it for some time to profile, to model that it can be in the future, a future, a potential tourism icon, a tourism venue. So we are now uh, renting it for two months, only for the run of Teatro Porvenir. Now, if we have proven its viability and feasibility, that people will be so interested to do this, to, to let it continue, then we will be on a, again on a planning board. We, uh, we will seriously negotiate again with the owners of how to really run this, transform this to a more sustainable, continuing uh, cultural venue for tourism, for education, and as a real uh, part of our community uh, lifestyle. I think the, the setup kind of um, works well with the, with the play that we're, we're doing. It, uh, it connects with the, with the culture of the play because um, cockfights have been around even before the Spanish came and uh, we've been doing that a lot. It helps me to be at home with the audience because um, when we get down to the first level, we're basically at the same level of the audience. It helps us connect more rather than just them down there and we're on top of the stage and they all have to look up. It feels more intimate having them surrounding us and it also keeps you on your toes because they're not just all up in front. You have to guard your movements on this side and on that side because they can see everything. I have been in Bohol for the last 17 years. I'm now 64 years old. Uh, but before then, I was in Manila where I studied, where I grew up and became a professional in the music and drama industry. I was hired by the Bohol government to be their first cultural officer. And that was in 1997. Because they saw the importance of arts as a medium or as a pillar of genuine people's development. I was telling them, your vision here in the province is what we call eco-tourism. It should not only be eco-tourism, it should be eco-cultural tourism. Because the real, the real major asset of our province are our people. It's talents, it's creativity, it's history. 
it's not just, of course, the churches, you see, the folkways, the custom, the structures are part of it, but it's our people. And when I became the leader of this provincial center for culture, all my experience in training, in performance, in production, in networking, I used all of them to make Bohol really a cultural destination, a cultural mecca also for other Boholanos to come back and really help Bohol. That's our vision here, to really amplify, to mobilize these inner resources of our people and help them realize that there is such a thing as inner resource and you could find them and we could help nurture them, these different talents in music, in art, in drama. And through this, we could really find genuine development among the communities. So that's why I'm here. Sir Gardi's vision of uh, this production is not just the play itself, but the venue. He is adamant to not bring it out yet because not, it's not just the play, it's the fact that he converted a cockpit which is uh, a place of, well, gambling and a lot of death, <laughs> of, of uh, fighting cocks. But also, it's a place where one culture can be used to promote another culture. Uh, the culture of cockfighting to become a place of theater and so on. And so he's trying to prove how simple, a simple grassroots place like this can be used to bring what other people might consider high culture to the masses. So very Shakespearean <laughs> in his vision. One of our main agenda is to really develop that pride of place pride of our country, pride of our local customs, pride of who we are, you know? uh, even if a part of it is already westernized, but really looking at our roots and our identity. And really relooking, redefining, reinvestigating our own history and culture. Because there are many parts of our history that has not been properly told. You know? By doing plays about our own history, then these heroes, this struggles, these issues and concerns about who we are could be further enlightened or be enlightening to our own youth. Like last night, what did the teacher say in our own language? I was so happy, she said. I brought my two to three children and they didn't sleep. She was afraid they would be bored to death. But eight years old, ten years old watching and said, Mama, it's history. I could understand this better than reading our history in the classroom. That's what he said. And that's really the, that's the power of art. Make things alive so that you understand better. And that is what I think is our vision for our communities, to make really art and life part of our development. I think uh, where this is headed, especially with the comments we get every night from leaders in different organizations and in the community and people in government, that they are willing to support this and that we have a cast of mostly young people, people still from high school, people in college. I think we can make this concept stick by having people come here instead of us going out there. I think the, the plan is not just to throw the talent around that, hey, we have Boholanas with this talent, but rather come over to Bohol and see how it works there. And maybe this can be a model for other theater companies, other community efforts elsewhere in the Philippines that, hey, your spaces which are not used very well, maybe you can repurpose them for a higher purpose and uh, bring people in to be educated, to be uplifted, to have more culture in their lives. This is not the end of the dream. This is just the beginning. This is just the birthing of this dream. So help us realize this dream for the next so many years. The theater of the future. Teatro Porvenir by Duloang Kasing Sining.